Hare Krishna and welcome to this video on Sanskrit prosody and the syllabification with the WWG method. We have a problem in Sanskrit prosody. How shall we rigidly deduce the exact syllables of a certain word, phrase or verse? Take for example this uh, verse in the Gita. Here, uh, to is unproblematic to syllabify, but what about drishtva? How to syllabify drishtva? Should we do it as drish and twa as drisht? and wa or perhaps as dr and shtwa. How to produce Sanskrit syllables in a rigid programmatic fashion without guesswork or with minimal guesswork? One solution to that problem is the WWG method. Here, WWG stands for Vira Singhe, Vasala, and Gamage. This group of linguistic researchers are the authors of an article called A Rule Based Syllabification Algorithm for Sinhala, published in 2005. Although this article primarily focuses on the Sinhala language, it also seriously addresses a substantial amount of Sanskrit words that are used within the language. Because of this, and because of its detailed approach, and because it also comes with proven syllabification results from test runs of tens of thousands of words, we will now go on to describe how it can be used to syllabify Sanskrit. So here we have a cluster of consonants C1, C2, C3 and C4 that is located in between two vowels, uh, the red vowel A and the blue vowel B. Note here that even though this numbering scheme is not found in the Vira Singhe paper, it does, I think, make it easier to talk about the consonants and vowels and the considerations uh, that are related to them. For example, we can see here that the main numbering direction of the consonants and um, vowels, uh, that it goes from the right to the left. And in this fashion, consonant C1 here is always the next one to the uh, red vowel A regardless of how many other consonants we have in a particular cluster. In any case, we, what we want to know, whether we are looking at a three consonant cluster or a four or five or uh, more consonant cluster, is which consonants are grouping with the red vowel A here and which group with vowel B. So here we have the main situation one, only one consonant in between the vowels. And in this case, it's very simple. C1, consonant one, always goes to the red vowel A, and the blue vowel B stands alone. So in the case of iti, where we have the t sound here as consonant one. We will produce a syllable t and another syllable where uh, which focuses on the blue vowel uh, has no consonants in it. The next main situation is when we have two consonants. 
and here also the production of the syllables is quite easy we have c1 here and c2 here and in this case we just split the consonant right in the middle so c1 ends up with the red vowel a and c2 ends up with the blue vowel b so in the case of atma m is uh, c1 and t is c2 and this means that the m will group with the red vowel to produce ma the syllable ma and the t will group with the blue vowel to produce the syllable at now on to the a uh, situation where we have three consonants which is a little bit trickier this is more complicated because we have three different conditions that we now have to identify before we can determine how our syllables should be produced in the first condition we have to look at uh, c1 extra carefully here because if C1 is R or Y, then C1 has to glue together with C2. And then C3 will be grouped together with the blue vowel here. So in the case of the Sanskrit word Indra, we see here a R in uh, C1 as a C1 and it will have to glue together with the uh, C2 which is a D so we get the syllable dr and the other syllable will be uh, in because C3 will group with a blue vowel now we go to the second condition if c1 is not r or y then if consonant 2 and consonant 3 both are stops then c2 and c3 cannot be uh, together so in this case we produce uh, the exact same result as in uh, condition one but for another reason so an example of this is the sanskrit word uktwa where we have a v as c1 and since v is not a r or y and because c2 is a stop and k which is c3 it's also a stop we will have to split c2 and c3 so therefore we leave um, the blue vowel with a single consonant k, to produce uk, and then the twa syllable is produced by c1 and c2 uh, traveling together with the red vowel Ah. Okay, so the next and last condition that we might run into if we have a three consonant cluster is uh, if we do not have the r or y in at C1 and we do not have two consonants that both are um, stops at C2 and C3, then we just group c2 and c3 together with um, the blue vowel b here and then let c1 and c uh, uh, and c1 and the red vowel a be together so in the case of ishtwa we see that v as a c1 is not a r or y and we see that uh, C3 here, which is a sh sound, 
um, it's not a stop consonant. Therefore, uh, C2 and C3 must be together with the blue vowel, and C1 goes with the red vowel. Now let's look at four or more consonants. Here we have only two conditions, not three. And the good thing is that condition 1 is exactly the same as the one we uh, met when we were discussing the three consonant cluster uh, conditions. So if C1 is R or Y, then once again C1 will glue together with C2 and uh, team up with the red vowel A here. And then all the rest of the consonants go with a blue vowel. So in the Sanskrit word opadrashtriyup, we get um, the following result. And we see here that y, the, the C1 here um, forces uh, a gluing with C2, the r, to produce riya. And then we take the rest of uh, the consonants, the t as C3 and the sh as C4, and team them up with the blue vowel down here. And this is also uh, equally applicable to a consonant cluster of five consonants. Uh, so if we place a C5 here, up next to the blue vowel, that position will um, remain so that in the syllabified result, the C5 will end up here also. So, in <clears throat> let's look at this example here with Kartsnya. So, we still have a Y at C1 here, and this will glue with a N at C2, so we get the nya, and then the rest of the consonants, the C3, S, the C4, T, and the C5, R, will all go um, together with a blue vowel down here. And then the last condition for four and more consonants in a row is is that if if C1 is not R or Y, then we have to manually figure out which one of these consonants is the one which is minimum sonority or least has the least sonority. And we when we have figured that out by some scheme, either by uh, uh, a, a determined method, or looking at it in a table, or just hearing it with our ears. When we have figured that out, then we just split it uh, right after that very consonant. So if, for example, C3 is the one, the consonant with the minimum sonority, then we just split everything after C3. So in this case, C3 and C4 will be with the blue vowel and C1 and C2 with the red one. So in Marzna, we see here that the N in C1 is not a R or Y. So, we have to find out the sonority, and we find that the T is the one with the least sonority, so therefore we split it like this, that the R and the T will go with the blue, and the S and N will go with the, la the red vowel, A. Ah. Thank you very much for watching, and Hare Krishna.